I see way too much clickbait and wild theories out there on a few platforms. So I want to hit you with all the straight facts about GTA 6 and cut the bullshit. I won't be covering absolutely everything in this video and we'll be focusing on the core features seen coming to the game including character details, the new wanted level and witness system and many other incredible features. I will leave a link to the GTA document which is a great summary for a lot of the things mentioned in here and maybe even a link to where you can see the leaked gameplay for yourself if you haven't seen it already. Let's get into the video. There aren't many things we know about the characters so far, but we knew a few details of the characters before we even had the first trailer because of the September 22 leaks. From the clips, we knew of Jason and Lucia being the main protagonists, and we even learnt their height with Lucia being 5 foot 3 or 160 centimeters, and Jason is 6 foot 1 or 185 centimeters respectively. The conversations between the two protagonists appeared to indicate that they were in a relationship with each other, which was later found to be correct with the release of the first trailer. The earliest of leaks from Tom Henderson suggested that there could be a female hacker protagonist in the game, and this could potentially be proved to be accurate, as in the leaked development footage, Lucia carries a hacker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer in her inventory. In one of the clips, Jason enters a shop and has an ability similar to the Eagle Eye system as seen in RDR2 and can highlight items of interest such as jewellery, safes, security cameras and more. Switching between these two characters will be incredibly fast and when they're stood close to each other it's virtually instant. We also found out about new and returning characters from the GTA 5 story. Jay Norris, the Life Invader CEO who had his head remodelled and was killed with the help of Michael and Lester live on TV in the GTA 5 story, was mentioned by some NPCs, in which one says about Jay Norris downloading their brain before being interrupted by another NPC to state that he was dead, indicating to us that GTA 6 is actually set in the same HD universe as GTA 5. New characters that were seen or mentioned in the leaks include Sam, who is seen having troubles with his partner in one scene at a nightclub. A character called Booby is also present in the game. There isn't much we know about Booby, but we do know that Booby introduces Jason and Lucia to a friend by the name of Dre. In the same clip inside the nightclub, Dre is talking to Jason and says, Man, y'all really came at the right time. Remember how I said I was trying to get in the music game? Booby and I partnered up. He put the bread up for the studio, and I got the artists. Excuse a poor accent there. <laughs> Before being interrupted by and getting into an argument with another character called Tit over Dre not getting him any drinks. After a small argument, he replies nobody likes you to Tit before walking over to Sam, who I mentioned earlier, is having trouble with his partner. Dre also refers to Sam as being straight out of a mob movie. In the same leaked clip, a prompt appears on the right hand side to show a new contact has been added to your phone. These two new contacts are RB Shaw and Billy. Shortly after these contacts show up as being added into your phone, another prompt shows and says you have a what up message received, indicating some form of online platform or social media could be coming to the game. A character seen in the trailer, though I'm not sure if we have a name yet, is seen in one of the clips shooting at Jason, who is hiding behind the car. There are a number of other characters we have heard of, but don't really have any information about, and these are Kai, Wyman, Zach, Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and thanks to a mission icon on the minimap that was found, we also know of a YJ that we will be doing some sort of missions with or for. Now these are not so much characters, but gangs are also seen and mentioned in the leaks. The San for San Haitian gang and the Guardia brothers are seen in game, but there was another group called the Far Right Militia which has only been seen in the form of a name given to a group in an events list in the development footage. It is unknown if these will be an active gang or something you will come across while exploring, similar to the clan in Red Dead Redemption 2. A number of new mechanics and gameplay systems are coming to the game that were not present in GTA 5. A few features are seen in RDR2, but some of them are new entirely. Dropping and picking up items and weapons will be much more immersive, and we'll have the ability to switch which shoulder we aim over with weapons. Shooting weapons from vehicles will be very different to GTA 5, as we will be able to shoot in third person, but inside the vehicle over the protagonist's shoulder, as opposed to GTA 5, where we shoot outside of the vehicle. Hanging from the windows of cars like what was possible in GTA San Andreas, with the free aim while driving cheat code, will also be possible. 
Whilst on the subject of shooting weapons, one thing I can say from what I have seen is that the quality and the sound of the guns when shooting have so much more depth and more realistic sound than what we have seen in GTA 5. The ability to go prone, walk whilst in cover, and even have the option to revive yourself after a heavy hit to health, similar to Red Dead Redemption's horse revival as seen in the Americas clip from the 28th of April 22, will also be in the game. A variety of new and existing open world activities will be making its way into GTA 6 as well. Dice, golf, fishing and races are available in single player if you're looking to pass some time. In one of the Americas clips from the 25th of May, you can see the spawning place of a delivery van event is near an industrial area of Port Gellhorn. On one of the garages from this zone, you can see a warning poster about security cameras being operated in the area, so you probably need to be careful not to be spotted while trying to rob one of the vans. Videos like the Hank's Waffles robbery video and Jason entering into a pawn shop activating his ability also suggest that robberies will be more expansive and available at more places around the map. There are also events or achievements for finding something or nothing in vehicle trunks and food stores, as well as delivery events for Port Gellhorn called Delivery slash Pickup Warehouse. There will be a huge number of enterable buildings, something which was confirmed with the original leak clips, as well as the leaks from Aaron Garbutt's son or his friend. The number of buildings will directly link with Fifth and Robbery, some of the main elements of the game's core gameplay. Spotted in the leaked footage is a vast array of interiors at generic locations such as gas stations, pawn shops and restaurants. The Americas clip from the 29th of August showed us a debug code in that the code was interior 157. From this it can be said that there are at least 157 different interiors in GTA 6 and counting. Enterable buildings that we have the names of so far are the Malibu Club, Pawn Shop, the Jack of Hearts Strip Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants and a large number of apartments with interiors like I mentioned, as well as laundries or laundrettes as seen in the Americas clip from the 2nd of August. A number of new and existing brands have been added to the game, with many of the original brands such as Snapmatic, Bleeter, E. Cola and Sprunk all receiving a new look. A number of new brands include Arches Footwear and Clothing, Bump and Grind, Marco Wholesale Footwear, Hank's Waffles which we've already seen in one of the clips, Sprunk Light and the Vice City Mambas. A large number of animals will be making its way from the Wild West, including snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, oars, wading birds, squirrels and more. One thing to note though, is that on one of the Grass River's wildlife placards, there is a silhouette of what seems to be a werewolf with a question mark on it. It is unknown whether this is a skunk ape or an additional mythical creature, similar to Bigfoot from GTA 5. The attention to detail in this game is going to be massive. In a couple of videos, you can see the light shining through Lucia's ear cartilage, and even get your character's clothes dirty, a nice returning detail from RDR2. In the video with Lucia in the back of a vehicle in a police chase, the sheriffs in the passenger seat look out of their side windows to check if cars are coming from the left or right. Bullets can now scratch through vehicles which also causes sparks, and the night ambience outside benefits from the upgraded lighting system and volumetric clouds like we have seen in RDR2. It already looks incredibly realistic with the orange tint on the road, the darkness ahead of it, and the really bright spots where the lights are and how reflections are handled. Stealing vehicles won't be as easy as previous instalments of Grand Theft Auto, as the existence of the Immobilizer Bypass indicates more high-end or luxury cars will be harder and more complex to steal, and the addition of the Slim Jim could be used for older or cheaper cars with less security. Once you've stolen the car though, it appears we could use the in-car navigation in order to get around the map, as various clips from inside vehicles appear to show a working GPS. It's important to make sure you don't crash however, as in one of the Americas clips, Lucia gets into a crash on the highway, and crashes look a lot more impactful, with much more damage to the front of the car splitting apart and bending much more realistically. When driving vehicles, the left D-pad will be used for additional vehicle controls and right D-pad for quick options. Moving on, an interacting with NPCs is returning in a similar way to what we have experienced with Red Dead Redemption 2. In a clip where Jason and Lucia are holding hostages while robbing Hank's waffles, 
you can handcuff, threaten and rob by aiming at an NPC and pressing buttons such as triangle, circle, X or square for different options. Hostages can either comply or disregard your orders and even try to run and escape the situation. Carrying Bodies is also returning from Red Dead Redemption 2 as seen in America's clip from the 24th of May 22. In the same Hanks Waffles clip, Lucia aims her pistol at the clerk behind the register and demands her to open up the register now, with the clerk quickly replying back with, Yeah, it's anything you want. A hostage can also be heard saying to another, Quick, let's make a run for it. Sticking in contact with and commanding the other protagonists will also play a key role in the game, as seen in the hostage situation clip at Hanks Waffles. A prompt appears at the top right of the screen, telling you to press R1 to check in with Jason, or hold for more options. This leads us on to how GTA 6 has received an overhaul to the wanted system. 5 stars appears to be the maximum wanted level again this time round, but a new addition is featured in the form of a status bar at the top of the screen. This white bar shows you how long until the cops are dispatched to the location of your crime, turning yellow and then red when the bar is low. When the bar depletes, it changes to flashing red and blue and displays cops arriving. In this same scene, Jason is seen trying to prevent customers who have a yellow icon above their heads from trying to run away and call in the police. There is a new witness system that is coming to the game and is displayed in the top right corner of the screen where a prompt is visible and reads full description, indicating that witnesses reporting you to the police have given them your description. It is going to be important that masks or disguises are used in order to help hide your identity. This is even more important with the addition of the new CCTV mechanics and detection meter that will be coming to the game. This new witness system mechanic also applies to getting into vehicles. We know this as the full description prompt when you have been seen entering a vehicle with a wanted level changes to no vehicle description but quickly changes to full vehicle description as the police have seen you enter the vehicle. A second prompt in the top left corner appears when entering the vehicle and reads any vehicle you are seen entering will be known to the law. It is also worth mentioning that there is a number of events called cop traps that are present in different locations, giving us an insight to being ambushed and set up by the cops at different points in the story. Just from these alone we can see how much more depth has been added to the policing and the wanted level system. The ability to change clothes, change vehicles or even go full guns blazing and leave no witnesses behind in order to evade the police and escape is going to be a great addition to the game. Carrying on with more gameplay additions, a money laundering icon is present in the Hanks Waffles robbery video which is tracked to a car wash, suggesting purchasable properties or businesses will be coming to single player with the intention of laundering money. Now this isn't something that's concrete that we've seen already but it is worth noting the different builds of both Jason and Lucia we have seen in the game. There are various versions of Jason visible in the leaks. Sometimes he's got long hair, sometimes short, sometimes stubble, and sometimes even clean shaven. The variations of this growth, especially with his beard, suggests a hair growth system like RDR2, or at the very least a deeper barber system than GTA 5 allowed for greater fine tuning. It doesn't just stop there though, and I must stress that this is just based on my thoughts and from what I have seen, but Jason and Lucia both appear to gain and lose weight or muscle in various clips. If you pair this with the mention of an event called Multi Gym, it's entirely possible we could see fitness and hit in a gym play a part in character development and their stats, like what we had in GTA San Andreas. As mentioned in my previous video, there are similarities in the variations of the weapon wheels which we have seen, and could give us something similar to RDR2. The first weapon wheel was split into three sections, with weapons, equipment and gear similar to the weapons, items and horse as seen in RDR2. It looks like the number of weapons you could carry with this weapon wheel is pretty large. It gets interesting on one variation of the weapon wheel though, as it appears to give us the use of weapons in both hands at the same time. The number of weapons we could carry with this version of the weapon wheel is limited, but there is an additional inventory in the bottom left corner of the screen that looks like it can hold trauma kits, pills, cigarettes and potentially even food. The middle weapon wheel is the latest one, and the ability to have weapons in both hands doesn't seem to be present. The quick inventory has also been moved, it's still on the left hand side of the screen, but rather than being at the bottom, it's been moved towards the middle. Judging by these weapon wheels, the number of weapons we can carry will be very limited, unlike GTA 5 where we have a magic pouch to pull all of these weapons from. 
Nice. In the Americas clip from the 10th of October 22, you can see an enemy NPC shooting at Jason. And right after Jason was on low health from this, a tip appears at the top left side of the screen showing you are injured. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Jason and Lucia will also be able to share these items and a number of other items and weapons between them. In the Americas clip from the 29th of October, where Jason is stealing items from a shipping container, he keeps certain items for himself, but also shares others. Items that can be shared seem to be weapons which they already have or can't equip, food and health items, as well as ammo. Specific tools such as the Immobilizer Bypass and the Auto Dialer, which are character specific items for Lucia, are not shareable. In one of the videos with Jason at the gas station, both Jason and Lucia are shown to have picked up some items, and when it's shown that both picked up the same amount of food, soda and wine for each, they shared half of each consumable. Duffel bags are also an addition to the game, and will see us being able to carry more items when looting. Jason is seen doing this when stashing items he is stealing from a shipping container and putting the items in his duffel bag. Whilst on the subject of items and weapons, we do have a good amount of new and existing items that will be coming to the game, which I will leave on screen now whilst I bore you to bits with more information. Collectibles appear to be a feature in single player, as America's clip from the 23rd of August 22 shows a developer playing with a hat with the debug text, Ambient Collectible Hat. Other collectibles have been seen in the form of Wyman's car parts. In one of the clips with Lucia, a dev places a cardboard box on the ground. The box has a circle icon on it, indicating that the boxes will be lootable. The debug text for this box is written collectible car parts, as well as Wyman car parts box generic used, indicating that collecting car parts for Wyman could be an addition to the game. There are so many more features in the game in regards to vehicles, attention to detail, and the incredible graphics and weather seen in the clips. But in order to keep the video a decent length, I will point you over now to have a look at the GTA document or even the leaks yourself, which I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check them out. If you want to keep up to date with the latest and greatest on GTA 6 and Rockstar games, make sure you sub to the channel and hit that notification bell and drop a like on the video if you want to see more like this. Thanks again for watching and peace.